Right, we are here for a bit of a different coffee chat this week. First and foremost, we've invited our mutual friend Chantelle from Aquarius Rising Africa and Solutions Aquarius Rising. Um, and before we go around and say how we both are, we're doing a very special day today because for those of you that I think are most of you that are subscribed to Bryce's channel, Esoteric Atlanta, you will have seen her tribute to uh, Doug Kramer, who she'd been filming with a lot recently and who both Shanti and I were going to as well. And we wanted to do a show today on grief because it's something that affects every single one of us, will probably affect every single one of us multiple times in our life. And it's such a complex thing to work through for a lot of people and so, so important. And grief comes in all sorts of ways. It comes from, you know, losing someone to death or passing over, however you want to say it. But it can also come from the loss of your health, a relationship, um, you know, friendship groups of who you thought you were. Oh, it's so many different areas for grief. So welcome, ladies. I'm really, really happy to be doing this with both of you today. How are you both doing? Let's start with you, Bryce. I, as I've said, I, and I appreciate both of you because the minute um, I found out that Doug had passed, I text you guys, I text Tamara, let you guys know, and I just appreciate you two, both you ladies and Tamara and everybody else who's been te texting me daily just to see if I'm okay because it is shocking. It is extremely shocking what happened and grief is, grief is a funny thing. It kind of comes in waves and goes and so I'm doing better today. And, um, but it's, I think this whole week I've just been in a state of shock, um, at what happened. So, um, he, he left way too soon, way too soon. What about you, Chantal? How are you doing? Well, again, thank you so much for inviting me to join you two lovelies. It's always definitely great to, to have chats with you. And it's so nice to have chats with you together. Um, yeah, very sad about the circumstances, however, that bring us together because it, it, ha it is shocking. Uh, we were in the throes of planning shows and definitely, you know, Bryce, I know you you introduced me to him as well. Um, although we hadn't actually uh, gotten anything together in terms of the shows, that was certainly happening in the pipeline. And I, I just think it's, it's such a crazy time. On the 12th of December um, was also the anniversary of my fiance's death. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, that was the same day that I think, was that not the day, Bryce, that you actually made it public? Yeah, they was found it... his body on the 11th, which probably would have been the 12th year, year date, um, depending on when they found when they, yeah. when they found the body. So yeah, it was all yeah. around all around the new moon that it all came out. So I think it's just such a, such a, you know, crazy time as well to have to, experience that it's just before Christmas, you know, uh, family time and all these things. Grief really is something that, as you said, Catherine, it, it just, you know, everyone deals with it so differently. And there are so many different uh, areas that one can grieve in. But I'm glad that we're having this conversation because I think a lot of people, especially around this time of the year, um, we always hear that this is the highest suicide time mm -hmm. as well, globally. So it really is a time where I think grief can bring us together or it can absolutely split us apart. It's to do, as you say, with uh, separation of friendships, relationships, through death, through decision, whatever it might be. You know, I think all of us are dealing with this in our own way. But I must say, even though I never got to meet Doug, I do feel it's so crazy because I, I he was part of our team. He really was part of our team. You know, he was he was part of who we what we stand for. You know, and definitely, there's no doubt in my mind that we would have gotten it together. You know, shows together with him and heard his story on Aquarius Rising Africa as well. But um, I'm glad that we're doing this conversation. Really, I am. Um, because I think it's always just nice to honor somebody as well um, and, you know, just get to speak about him um, because I think all of us, all of us feel this, uh, this loss from him, of his rather, yeah. 
I did um a few weeks ago. I will put the link in the description box below. Um, a friend of mine called Tara Nash, who is actually now a grief specialist, um, because she's experienced a lot of grief in her very young life. And we did a lovely, lovely um interview together on grief. And I would really point people towards that because this will probably bring up a lot for people watching. And um, also, Bryce, you did a really beautiful um, tribute show to him on your channel. So I'll put the link to that as well. But I wanted to start it off with, um, you know, it's so interesting, isn't it? There's so many judgments by so many people. And this can vary culturally. It can vary generationally. It can vary with religion, um, with belief systems, absolutely everything about other people's judgments about going through belief. So I've been in a couple of times in my life, gone through grief for various different circumstances, which unfortunately has happened a lot, particularly over the last five years. And it's so amazing how some people, people start telling you how to behave. And sometimes it's, it's well meant and other times it's not so well meant. So I want to start by asking you, Bryce, in terms of with these opinions that people have, how do you think that we can use what we're all going through? And by all, I mean collectively for everyone watching this as well, with what Doug's really sudden passing has brought up into all of us. How do you think we can all learn from this positively in terms of respecting each other as individuals in our own journey? I think number one, I think is we were kind of talking about this off camera is respect the fact that it happened. Mm. I think what happens is something like grief, something like a death, a sudden death, especially can be so shocking to the nervous system and so shocking to the psyche that we are going to rush for anything to try to make that pain go away. And sometimes that is illogical. I'm just going to put it out there. He is not in witness protection program. I know that's a rumor going, he is not alive. You guys, we have to face that. Um, and we have to face the facts that, that, and I think what happens is people try to numb it. You know, so they don't have to face the reality that this happened and can happen to even to ourselves and our own mortality. And I said, you know, one of the last videos I did with Doug, we were talking about the twin flame cult that's just kind of been exposed. And he really wanted to to talk about that. And he had seen the video I did with Steve. So we got Steve on and did it again. And um, it was so funny this morning, actually, I woke up and before I had thought about, oh, I need to send Doug. There's, I've covered this cult before called the love is one cult. Um, and I was like, I need to send that to Doug and we should do another video to, to having his perspective of this cult. And I literally this morning was opening the refrigerator when I got up and I go, I need to send Doug that information. And then I, I stopped in my tracks and I was like, it just like, it, so it's like this, as you start to adjust to that grief and that shock, it's like one part of your brain is still going in the, tra in the trajectory of this person still here. While the, another part of you is like settling into the fact that they're gone. And I think that's why a lot of police officers say when they have to go deliver news to families that grief affects people very differently. There's not a formula to explain how someone's going to react when you tell them that their loved one has passed away. Some people, they just go completely blank because yeah. their psyche is, and I think the most important thing to honor that person is to honor the fact that they passed and not try to sugarcoat it, not try to say, oh, they're in witness protection or make up some, or, or, or I know there's a lot of people thinking that he took himself out. Mm -hmm. That is not true. He did not take, he did not unalive himself. He, he was in a really good place. But I think in thinking somebody did that, there is like a piece that they made that decision. Yeah. That's where I think people go there. He was, he did not do that. We have to face that he actually died. He died. Mm -hmm. And to, to be okay, I think so many people confuse spirituality as being just light and love all the time. But most of spirituality is tears. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It's okay to say, this sucks. It's okay to say that. It's okay to say, I'm sad. Why did this happen? It's okay to have those moments because that is your love for that person. That is your love for who they were. And it's actually, as I'm listening to you guys, I'm thinking, God, how amazing he would have been on both your shows mm -hmm. and just his message, you know, he, his, and I think for Doug too, I said this to Tamara this morning. I think I said this to you yesterday, Shanti, you know, Doug was a lot like us three. Yeah. He was kind of on the fringes of the ex Scientology community. Like us, they are kind of on the fringes of like, quote unquote, truth or community, you know, like, because he, he went in certain directions with his research that we go in that other ex Scientologists don't go in. And he had experienced a lot of backlash over the last few years. He had lost four different channels. He was rebuilding a channel. 
And I think finally he got to this place where people believed him, where people like me, Catherine, Shanti, were able to look at his research and say, this is awesome. I believe this is great work. I want you on my channel. I want to talk about this. And so there was a confidence there that all of a sudden this hard work he was doing, people believed him. And so in honoring them this grief, I, I said this on my channel and I'm, I'm going to try to do this. I hope other people do it too. In honoring Doug's life and his work, I would encourage every person that loved his work to go to his channel and try to download his videos to save them because we know his channel will eventually come down. I don't know when. And that's how his work, he, he can be remembered is hold on to his work and we'll open up another channel and put his work up, mm -hmm. you know, and just to keep that work and keep his message and his fight alive. If that makes sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Shanti, what does it bring up for you that? You know, I've also experienced quite a bit of grief in my life. Um, I've lost some loved ones very close to me and through murder, which has, it's very shocking to actually have to face that. In my situation, um, I went to identify my fiance's body um, because I was the next of kin. And it was, they'd shot him and I'll be quite blatant execution style. Mm. So the bullet came out under his left eye. Uh, I'll never forget that day. It was so raw and so real. And there's nothing you can do that takes that reality away. Mm. But one thing I will never forget, I was like freaking out. And in the next moment, I heard his voice say to me, it's only my body, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. That calmed me down immediately. So it didn't stop you from going through the motions, but it gave me a sense of peace that even though the body is gone, the spirit lives on. And I don't know what I would have done if I did not have that reality in my life. And I say reality because it is a reality. It most definitely is, you know. It took me, I'll never forget as well, six months. And I also remember driving home one night from a friend and the reality dawned on me, I would never see this person again. I would never hear him walk down the passage. <laughs> I would never hear his voice. And he was an Austrian, so he had a strong Austrian accent. And he had such funny ways of saying things, you know, um, in his accent. And we kind of had a special way of actually talking to each other, you know, because of the way he was and his, his isms, I used to call them the Hunnicisms, <laughs> you know. Um, but as time goes on, I honestly know he left for me. It's like when I say he left for me, because it's through that loss that I gained what I have gained today. It made me understand that at any moment you can lose someone like that and when that happens and it, it kind of got me onto the track i am now i've maintained ever since then it's because of that i do the work i do today and um, it got me onto the track of understanding that if today was my last day on earth how would i like to spend it and i don't always get it right because yes hum humanism creeps in and you know, we kind of get irritated or irked with each other and we have our arguments and our fallouts and what have you. But I think at the end of the day, for me, it's made me realize that life is so special and it's so sweet that we should treasure and enjoy every moment. And honestly, his spirit lives on through me. You, re you know, I've, I've understood that. And it's like, with the work I've done over the years, the information I'd be getting, the downloads, because I always say I wasn't taught to do what I do. It came from my heart. And it was like I'd be sitting at like two, three in the morning, just writing stuff down and boom, boom, I would 
definitely sense his presence with me. And I know God ordained him to be with me. And just I would hear his voice tell me one or two things. And I would just write and write and write and write. And it gave me, you know, his death gave me something amazing in, to live for and to live with. It gave me a sense of understanding that even though we leave each other in the physical realm sometimes, like we move out of the body sheath, so to speak, we never, ever leave each other. And in that case, you know, we are, you know, our, our all-encompassing spirit absolutely just becomes part of who I am now. And in honoring him as a human being for what he was for me and my son, um, you know, he was not my son's biological father, but he was my son's father in every sense of the way, from when my son was two until the age of 10. You know, um, so in that, you know, he was his he was his father. Mm -hmm. So it 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 also, you know, it it was about understanding and not denying it. And I think Bryce, what you've said there is very true. We have to face that the person is no longer there. And that facing, it's like you were talking in, you know, about walking to your refrigerator this morning and going, saying something, you know, that that reality. I mean, for me with Hannes, it was like literally six months after that, you know. And also, I mean, I recently lost Dom. Dominic was my partner of 13 years. He passed away from cancer. I mean, although we'd broken up for three years already. Um, it's a very different kind of experience uh, when you lose someone suddenly. And when you lose, we, you kind of expecting he was very sick, still a shock to the system. And, you know, just that kind of loss again. Um, but it was somehow different. It was easier to deal with because I don't think it was such a huge shock. As you say, you know, the nervous system takes such a hammering. But again, everyone, I think, will deal with it in their way. But we all need to come to terms with the fact that when someone leaves the earth plane, we human beings, we love touch, we love smell, we love to feel, we love to hug, right? We love the texting, we love the voice on the other side of the phone or watching you guys on Zoom. I mean, if one of you had to leave the earth plane now, I would be so shattered, <laughs> you know, despite the fact that I'm sure I'd be seeing you in dreams and all sorts of things, you know, <laughs> to, just to not have your faces looking back at me on days like today would be shattering. And I think it really is a readjustment that we have to, we have to face and we have to live with. But at the end of the day, to know that the spirit lives on and has just literally moved to another dimension for me is very, very comforting. Mm. And I think that more than anything, to understand that where he is now, it can probably be a lot more of assistance to us than what it could be in the physical form as well. So that for me is, is how I, I mean, you know, that's kind of put it into a nutshell. It's mm. not easy, but I think it's... Um, it's something that is very necessary that we could actually, you know, it's a process. Death is a process. It's a process of coming to terms with, with, with the death of a loved one and a friend and a relationship, you know, um, a friendship, whether they're death, whether it's death or, or um, deciding to separate, you know, anything like that. It's a process. Yeah. It really is. And I think it's going to hit people, you know, this process hits people so differently. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you both about is um, is the feelings. Well, I'm going to say how I feel about it and I'd love your opinion on it. You know, to allow yourself to feel that loss from almost like a selfish point of view, the lost possibilities, the lost future that you'd envisioned mm -hmm. the dreaming of. So Bryce and I were talking quite a lot off camera. It's like, you know, for, for all these different relationships, one thing that life teaches you is how how really valuable those real friendships are, the people that actually do have your back, that you really can trust. And and those friendships aren't just built over the, the test of time. You can meet someone where you've got this instant connection. And obviously, the more of a journey you go through yourself, the more you recognize that when you have it. So, you know, I've got deeper connections now with people like you that I've only known a few years, way more so than people I might have known, you know, my whole life. 
And I think allowing yourself, for me, one thing I've learned with so much grief over the last few years of, of humans and animals is to allow yourself to be a little bit selfish, allow yourself to, to grieve for those lost possibilities, for the comfort mm. that that person gave you in your life and that you needed that and that now there's going to be a different relationship with that that's going to take you on to the next bit of your journey. How do you feel about that, Bryce? It's so interesting as you're saying that and it's like, you know, what Shanti just said about it. I feel the same way. If I found out something happened to you ladies, I would be shattered. You would probably not see me on YouTube for like weeks at a time because I would have to like really process that. And as you're saying that too, it's, it's right. It's We know that he's in the spiritual realm, but it's the presence of his humanness. Um, and something, yeah. I, you know, he, for those who watched his channels, he would always say, welcome my friends. Everyone was like, how are you doing my friend? Like he was always so warm towards his guests and we were talking off camera Doug was the type of person where he would bring people on his show that he didn't even necessarily agree with yeah he would still address them with respect and my friend my friend and he would I would always tell him how brave he was because I saw him as someone that was very courageous and he would say no 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 I, I just I'm not brave I just I just didn't have a choice but he did have a choice mm -hmm. for those who don't know what happened to Doug Doug was a, a high ranking Scientologist. He was in the quote unquote confidential levels. He, he grew, he's second generation. He grew up in it. At the same time, he was also building his career in Hollywood. He was on a soap opera called Passions. He had been on Nip Tuck, these big TVs. Like he had just signed with a really big agency. He was on his way to becoming an A list celebrity. And within 20 minutes, he woke up to both Scientology and the Hollywood cult, if you guys know what I mean, in 2008, so before a lot of people even knew what was going on. And then that 20 minutes, his whole life fell apart. He lived in his car for a while. He was disconnected from his family. And he, and then 14 years later, he was able to start speaking about after he went through that 14 years of, of the dark night of the soul and coming out of the healing of that, and he was like, no, I'm not brave. I just didn't have a choice. But he did have a choice. He could have in that 20 minutes learned about all this and said, screw it. I'm not going to lose my family. I'm not going to lose my career. I'm just going to pretend like I didn't know that and keep going in the trajectory I'm going. But he didn't because he had integrity. And he was one of the last videos he put up was about young people. Mm -hmm. If you guys know what I mean, like he was really active in trying to and, and, and in that time, he and so his courage to allow his whole life to fall apart in order to do the right thing and to still 14 years later to not be jaded, yeah. to, to address every person as my friend and my, you know, and to have that feeling of, of compassion for people is huge. And one of the last things he did say to me, and I can't, I can't remember if he said this off camera or on camera, because he was just the same person off camera as he was on camera. He said, I think I finally figured out what resurrection of the soul means. He goes, it's got nothing to do with the body. Yeah. And so he goes, it has, I think I resurrected my soul. He goes, what I went through, he goes, I don't ever want to do that again. It was awful, but I'm really glad it happened. Yeah. And that was one of the last things he said. And he did have a belief. I know in my channel, he didn't like using the word God. And I think that was be kind of his he's trying to get away from like religion and cult, but he did have a belief in a higher power. And he had alluded to that, that that voice and that little feeling was what saved him from Scientology, from Hollywood. And I mean, that man had like four channels taken down. He was so censored and he got up every single day, sat at his computer with his dude poster by behind him, lit a cigarette and just went at it every day. And that took so much courage. And that is what I, I will miss. I know he's still with us in spirit, but to be able to hop on the Zoom and to be able to, to say, to have him say, how you doing, my friend? Mm. How you doing? Yeah. And to know that what we go through as people doing this exposing like he is, he's someone that can understand as well. You can say, man, I've got this freaking person's after me. And, the, and he totally gets it. Mm. He totally gets it. And understands and that's that's what that's that comfort of that you know having someone that, that like sees you and knows that that you know that's in that physical body like that's what what is definitely going to be missed that physical presence presence yeah
apologies Absolutely. for the mic. My camera going wobbly, Pumpkin's just joined us and is just about to push everything off. So it's not a ghost of pushing it all back. Well, you know what, though, Catherine? I will say this. Uh, <laughs> Catherine, Doug loved, he was obsessed with dogs. Mm. He loved dogs so much. Every time we got up from filming, he would be like, where's Robbie? Where's Robbie? And so I would put the laptop on the floor. So he, and he'd be like, scratch his belly. So I could like, run, you know, he, and he <laughs> said to him, I said, Doug, if you want, I can get you a rescue if you want a dog. And he'd be like, no, no, my life's not. I'm, he's like, I smoke. I don't want to like endanger because I just live vicariously. But he loved animals so much. I wouldn't be shocked if he's there playing with your dogs and your cats right now. Exactly. So. exactly. <laughs> no. And they pick, they pick up things like that so much. Yeah, this- yeah it's it's complex isn't it it's also there's so much to it and I think for me just allowing people Shanti just to really talk through and let people have the time to talk it through I know when my father died in uh, 2020 it was the worst thing for my mum not to be able to have a proper funeral none of his friends would come because they were all old and they were too scared and they were told they couldn't come not by us but by their doctors and things and you know, this this lack of connection and, and lack of being able to process things we all know can have devastating effects on people moving forward. I think that must have been probably one of the hardest things is is having a, a, a COVID death or a funeral during that time for exactly the reasons that you're speaking. <laughs> you know, really just, I really, I think that has to, has to be one of the cruelest things that this government could ever have imposed upon us because I saw that, I, thank God, I wasn't affected by any of that, but I saw it happen to so many of my friends um, and people that I knew. And just, you know, uh, one of my good friends in Namibia as well, um, One of also her father passed away during that time and she was filming for me and how far they had to be from the coffin and how these guys had to be dressed in these hazmat suits things. It was just like wicked. It was so wicked during that time. And I think, you know, that's the one thing that I think, you know, when someone passes and crosses over is that you can hold somebody's hand, you know, you're there to hug them, whether it's the sister, the brother, the auntie, the uncle, the cousin, the child, or just someone who's there you know that closeness that connection and I, that's what I love about us here is that we can actually talk about him we didn't have to physically meet him you know um he was our brother definitely he was part of our team and um you know just and and I think all of us here know that because I think we all have a little bit of wisdom beyond all three of us sitting here beyond um well we didn't know him so why is it affecting us no, we felt his spirit, we felt his goodness, you know, we felt the energy and we felt the connection. And I think that is why it's important that we can really just continue on. And I would love to, you know, continue on his legacy because he's left a legacy behind. And, you know, um, that he's, his crossing has not been in vain. No. You know, we must realize that, you know, in these times we are in huge spiritual warfare, whether we like it or not. I mean, you guys know some of the people I am to be on my channel. I mean, they, this is no joke time. Um, and and even if you're a believer in that or not, it's obvious what's happening in the world right now is crazy. And there's definitely some dominating force that is certainly doing what it's trying its best to do to get uh, people like us to shut the F up, right? And we're not going to. And I think that's why that's what makes us even more important is that we're not going to keep quiet. We're not going to sit back and just go, oh, I'm sorry, you know, forget it tomorrow and what have you move on. This is a fight we're all in. We're all standing up together. We're all making this happen. And I think that for me, especially with Doug's situation, is really important. And, and that's what it's home for me as well. You know, Shanti, I think he felt that, and I don't want to be selfish or egotistical in saying this. I picked up that he started to feel comfortable because mm. he met people that, that felt like he did. Mm. Yeah. And I started to notice the more he filmed with me, the more relaxed he was getting because I think he realized like, oh, she knows other people that also know what I know and they believe me. And I have a team now. I have people I can yes. test and and I don't have to like 
prove myself. Like they believe me. And I, and I could see that the more, especially when we did the episode with Steve, he jumped on that episode with Steve and he, they were chatting, like they had known each other for years. And I think he just, that was the type of person. I will say this too, like the integrity level, um, Doug, Catherine and I were supposed to do a episode on hypnosis because um, Doug has really studied hypnosis and the way it's used in propaganda, first through Scientology and in the media, all that kind of stuff. And he's, he went, and so I thought, well, let's, you know, let's do, let's, let's do this. And you had, Catherine, you'd expressed interest in that. So we had scheduled this show and then we had a scheduling conflict. Something came up with him. We had to reschedule something. Catherine, we had to reschedule. That happens a lot, right? So the day we were supposed to film and Catherine couldn't do it, uh, uh, Doug hopped on and Catherine had said, well, you guys go ahead without me if you, if you need to. And I said that to Doug, I said, you know, Catherine says we can go ahead with, without her. And Doug goes, absolutely not. He's like, I want Catherine in that. We agreed to do this with Catherine. He's like, we will do another episode instead. We will talk about something else instead. And so that's the opposing, uh, op our controlled opposition that we did one of the last videos, because he was like, uh, uh, Catherine is going to be a part of this. So he was not someone that was just out there chasing numbers or chasing, he yeah. was an individual person and he wanted specific people because he wanted to hear their voices. Right. And, and that was something that was so, and so, and I, and I think that's really a, 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 a credence to him because he, so many people on YouTube and all different categories and corners of YouTube, it's all about the numbers and this and that. I think for us, and I said this to Doug, because I would send Doug the footage of our episodes and he'd be like, okay, well, I'll wait a couple of weeks to put it up on my channel. And I'd be like, don't worry about it, man. I was like, listen, we're all fighting the same battle. I don't care if you put it up after the same time as I put it up. It's no big deal. Like do it. As long as the message is getting out, he'd be like, really? And I was like, yeah, man. I was like, listen, we're all shadow banned. We're all getting strikes. Like as long as somebody's getting the message out, it's not about that for us. Like it's, 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 yeah. it's, so and true. I think, when he, when I kept reiterating that to him, like I didn't, when we would film, I'd be like, put it up right, right away. If you want to, I don't care. The more I said that to him, the more I think he relaxed into, oh my God, these are my people. These are my teammates. This, this is my is important that. And I think this is where it shines through. And, and, you know, as you go through life and you experience and you learn the hard way, you really count how important that is. And I think everyone probably watching this is probably the same as us, where you've learned a lot of those lessons the hard way, where people that you did feel would have your back. And what I think Doug showed so absolutely beautifully because of all those experiences he'd been through, which are more than most of us can really even contemplate, really, you know, to be really pulled apart from your family. Yes, you can all have disagreements. You can have different belief systems. They can think you're mad, but that's very different to what people, when they leave Scientology, have to go through. Completely different level of trauma. And what he did is he went through all that and he was such a walking example of how you can go through that and you can maintain your standards. You can build on them. You 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 stay true to yourself. And however many times people try to knock you away from that, because quite frankly, I'm sick of people sort of trying to justify their behavior. Yes, we're all humans. We all screw up. We all make mistakes. But being able to own that is a really special skill and to be able to then learn from that and then really, really maintain that integrity with the people that you're interacting with. And like you said earlier, Bryce, the fact that every single time was my friend, my this, there's there's dealing with each other respect. I've seen that the least respect on this whole YouTube community over the last few years, it's been shocking from people that really, really should know better. If we can't, we moan about censorship and yet, if someone doesn't agree with our opinion or guest or the way you phrase something, you're hung, drawn and short quartered. What difference is that to the whole Hollywood scene that we're trying to get away from? If these behaviours, those dangerous behaviours start with the small stuff. Yeah. And that's where a lot of the damage done. The, you know, the age old saying where, you know, good men can do really bad things is so so true and if you allow yourself to get into these behavioral patterns it's a very narrow boundary between that and real atrocities as we're all finding out about really it's so true and that is a walking example of what doug was good at of still respecting someone even if they did not share his opinion and i i'm going to tell you guys there is a channel out there that is kind of a troll channel that trolls all the ex-scientologists and even that guy did a tribute to Doug mm. and he mm. was trolling him and he actually got emotional in his tribute to Doug. That shows you how much 
Doug's integrity and respect for even his enemies impacted his enemies. That even this, his enemy, his troll was mourning his death mm. and got yeah. emotional doing a tribute. He didn't, you know, it, it, um, that speaks volumes for the type of person that Doug was. Really and, yeah. So, and it kind of brings, I, I have a little, I, for you guys to hear his voice, I don't know if we're going to be able, can I try to play it and see if you guys hear it just so we could hear his voice one last time and then we'll read the, read the song lyrics. Hello, my name is Doug Kramer. Uh, this is the first YouTube video I've ever attempted, but I'm sitting out here in Los Angeles uh, under lockdown. I think it's like three or four months now since uh, like the rest of the world, we're under house arrest, uh, quarantine, whatever you want to call it. So while the world is burning down around me and there's literally nothing else to do, I figured now would be a good time to pass the time and talk about what it's like growing up in a secret fucking society. That was Doug, that smoking that cigarette. That was his first ever video. And I will have to say, I'm gonna we're gonna read some song. Is it okay if we read the song lyrics? Me too, yeah. So Shanti and I were filming. Are we filming? We were zooming. We were not filming. We were just chatting you on Zoom. Um, and you had said something about you know we're in this war together, and we and this is a war, and in war we lose we lose people we care about. And the difference between us and the psychopaths on the other side of this is we actually mourn. We care for the people we fight beside. And there's um, one of the greatest books ever written, a book by Victor Hugo called Les Miserables. They've done the play. They've made a movie, Les Mis, The Miserable. It's about the French Revolution. And listen, no one throws a revolution like the French do. But uh, there's this song called Empty Chairs at Empty Tables. And I say this, too, because you guys who followed Doug, um, know you know that when he did his Q&As, um, he would play this game where anytime anybody said Xenu or typed in Xenu, which is in Scientology, they're, that's kind of like their Lucifer character. Um, you would have to take a shot or take a smoke or eat a piece of chocolate, whatever your vice was. And he kind of made light of it because that's what the that's what that's what the light does. Like we can laugh at things too, even if they're serious. We can we can we can crack a joke, right? And so um and so that made me think about this song too, empty chairs at empty tables. So for those who knew Doug, I'm gonna go ahead and say Zeno 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 Zeno. Take a bite of chocolate, whatever you got to do. And Doug's on Doug's behalf. But the song, it goes. There's a grief that can't be spoken. There's a pain goes on and on, empty chairs at empty table. Now my friends are dead and gone. Here they talked of revolution. Here was they that lit the flame. Here they sing about tomorrow, but tomorrow never came. From the table in the corner, they could see a world reborn and they rose with voices singing. I could hear them now. The very words that they sung became their last communion on this lonely barricade at dawn. Oh, my friends, my friends, forgive me that I live and you are gone. There's a grief that can't be spoken. There's a pain goes on and on. Phantom faces at the window, phantom shadows on the floor, empty chairs at empty tables where my friends will meet no more. Oh, my friends, my friends, don't ask me what your sacrifice was for. Empty chairs at empty tables where my friends will meet no more. And that song when we were talking just, um reminded me of Doug because he spoke about tomorrow. He spoke about us, everybody waking up and taking our power back. And, and he challenged institutions like the three letter agency and their involvement in these cults. And he spoke of revolution. He spoke about tomorrow, but for him, tomorrow never came. And um, yeah, I think his death should not be lived in his death or his life should not be lived in vain. And we will continue um to bring that tomorrow in for him and you know Absolutely. we might i hate to say that we might lose more i don't know but you know that's we're in a we, we are in a war right now you know half the world doesn't even realize it but we are and so and it's people like doug i know i got a lot of comments that doug brought a lot of comfort to people who feel very alone because they're aware of what's going on and no one around them seems to be aware and so um for you guys i just say just keep you know this might sound like blasphemy to some people but you know in the 90s they had those what would jesus do bracelets like what would doug do like 
he would he would go to his enemy and say my friend how are you my friend how are you you know and so anyway so I stop crying here I know it's hard any final words from you Shanti Sure, it's such a tough time right now, you know, um, and I think no words can really make us feel better. I think that's that's the biggest thing that I learned in my times of grief. Everyone is so well-meaning and they will often come with their advice and do this and do that and have you tried that and blah, blah, blah. But the one thing I learned and also as a therapist and a healer for many years is that just to be there for someone, you know, in their time of grief. Um, no speaking necessary. You know, I sometimes will sit with some friends on the phone. They'll be a thousand miles away. And I'll just say I'm here. Um, no talking, no advice, no nothing. Just having a cup of tea and I'm here. I'm listening to you cry. I'm listening to you rant. I'm listening to you berate yourself, whatever it is. Um, I'm here. And that's it. You know, I think just to be there for someone, uh, often not without words or without judgment, whether it's good or bad, because judgment can also be good. It's just not necessarily always a bad thing to judge something as good is equally as judgmental as to judge it as bad, right? Mm -hmm. um, just to be there in non-judgment and just in love, just as a just as a friend, just as a ear, yeah, just as someone so that the person knows they're not alone. That for me, I think would be what it is during this time. And yes, absolutely. If, if you have some beautiful words of advice or you're feeling inspired to share something or um, call at a certain time, you know, it's really, you know, and I want to say, just trust your intuition as well. I'll never forget also talking about that many years ago. Um, I had a friend and she wasn't a close, close friend. She'd, she'd been someone that I'd been introduced to by a close friend, maybe a couple of weeks before that. And the one night I had this feeling, I just had to call her. And something just said to me, call her. And I picked up the phone and I called her and she answered the phone and she was sobbing. And I said to her, I don't know why I needed to phone you now, but I phoned you, are you okay? And she said, no, I'm standing here with a bottle of vodka and a handful of sleeping pills. And had you called me two minutes later, I would have swallowed them. And I think, you know, that for me was such a profound moment as well. And it just taught me so much that when you feel that feeling, just to be there for someone, and maybe you're wrong, maybe that person doesn't need you in that moment, that's, Im that's immaterial. But just to follow through when you feel like to call someone or to be there for someone or to send them a message at the time, you never know when that is going to be that moment where you literally save someone's life as well. Mm -hmm. So that for me was, was very important. So just be there, follow your intuition. No judgment, no advice, unless they ask for it, really. If they come to you for advice, different story. Um, but just be there in their times of grief. I love it. I love it. And one thing that always comes up for me is, and I, I know I've heard this said so many times before, but how often do we wait for a funeral to tell people what we really think, to say what they think in a world where... There's so, people are so willing to tell people what's wrong with them, what they don't like. You know, imagine how we can shift things around is we've, if we tell people what they do like and it, I would give that encouragement because, you know, it's a tough, tough place out there for a lot of people. We can all be kinder. We can all reach out a little bit more and, um, you know, be very, very oh, yeah. helpful for the people that we do have in our lives that are really got the level of integrity and love and passion that Doug has got. 
Um, so, you know, I'm for one, I'm very grateful for what he's done and also what he's shared with everyone and the legacy that he has left. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, I just hope he feels that I know his body wasn't found for eight days at no fault of anyone's guys. He lived by himself. Um, but I hope that he sees the outpouring. It's been, it's been quite, that has been like the silver lining in all this, just the outpouring so many tribute videos, so many comments. And I just, you know, be that type of person that when you leave this earth, people feel that impact because you could, because you were kind to them because you gave them a voice and you called them your friend, you know, just, just the fact that he said that you never know how many people he affected by saying, Hey, my friend, how are you? Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's, um, and be that person to other people that he was, you know, we, we've all got our crosses to bear. And that's one thing I think was great. He didn't, even though he was frustrated with the mind control of the collective, he understood it because he had been in it as well. And so he didn't, even though he get frustrated with these things and all the stuff going on, he never, it was like, he didn't judge people. He was just trying to like coax them awake. Right. There was, there wasn't a lot of judgment because he had been there himself. He had been just, he, you know, and that's important to remember too, when we go around thinking, especially in our little corner of the internet, that we're somehow better than everybody else, because we know, or we observe things that other people don't, we're not better than anyone and carry that non-judgmental energy that Doug had. Like, I'm aware of this and I'm going to try to be there for you, my friend, so that when you figure it out, you have a safe place to land with no judgment. So that's very important. He was a true truther. I hate using that word, but he generally was a true truther. With absolutely oh. the right intent and absolutely the intent to share his life experiences and help others. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot that can be learned from that. Thank you. Well, Nate. I wanted to say something, if you don't mind, Catherine, uh, actually in light of what you said. I want to just say something to each of you ladies. Bryce, I think you are amazing. I think you are, you've got such a soft heart and such a good heart. And you have, honestly, I love having you on Aquarius Rising Africa. You are a brilliant researcher. I always say you are, you're my favorite nerd and you totally are. Um, and I so appreciate you for who you are. And I know we take a lot of flack from people out there, but it's so good to know that you are my friend as well, as well as the way you were with Doug. Catherine, I want to say the same to you. It's such a pleasure working working with you. You're like someone my age, you know, and I think I love your warmth. I love your compassion. I love your love for animals. And I love the way you always go beyond the call of duty for those furry feathered scaly <laughs> whatever friends of ours and really the two of you I'm proud to call you my friends because it says something about me too that I'm able to have friends like you that are caring and compassionate and would definitely go beyond the call of duty for others so thank you so much for what you both do in this community I know that some days myself, I've got to, I look at myself, my eyes are swollen like this. I go, Jesus, please take the wheel. <laughs> and I go and put my face, I have a, I have a salad bowl of ice in my freezer. <laughs> put water in it, dunk my face in ice like several times, just so I can look semi-decent before we appear on a show. But and I know that all of us here yeah, sometimes feel that way. But you know, it's such a joy to be able to share this time with you, with you two. And I know you two are definitely two of the people I will never forget, and who will always be very close to my heart, and always be that what one of one two of the two two of the the few that I can say I would certainly also go way beyond the call of duty for you ladies so thank you and thank you for doing the show because i think it's such a such a valuable topic we deal with grief is not easy and it's very very sore 
And I think to share it with loved ones is a very powerful thing. Thank you. Back at you, Shanti. <laughs> Back at you. Yeah. I, I, I have to say, you, I consider you two some of my closest friends, absolutely. And I will say that's something Tommy Scoville did say. The thing about YouTubers is that there's a level of understanding that you have with each other that the world does not under. Unless you're on YouTube yourself, there are things you go through that cannot be understood by anybody else unless they're on YouTube too. And it's so awesome to have. I feel like I've known you guys forever. I, and Doug was the same way. If you guys called me tomorrow and said, I'm closing my channel down, I don't want to do that anymore. I'd be like, well, that's sad, but I, we're still friends. So call you next week. We'll catch up. You know, like it's, it's not, it's not for us. I don't think it's business. It's not just business, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, and that wasn't for Doug either. And I'm just so sad that he did not get a chance to meet you guys in person and work with you guys because he, after I, I told him about you guys, he had watched both your channels. He thought you guys were so cool. And, and um, yeah, back at you, Shanti and Catherine, you, I love you. You guys are like sisters. So <laughs> totally. I completely agree. Love you both. And thank you so much for everyone who's watching. And I hope it helps anyone who's going through what they're doing. And um, hi, Doug. <laughs> Lots yeah. of stuff mm -hmm. but... <laughs> Dino, 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 I, hope, I hope he's enjoying that wacky tabacky in the sky he loved he loved <laughs> yeah, the Dino, beauty, Dino. the beauty about this is you know i truly i truly believe that when when they leave their earthly bodies they become angels for us and i have no <laughs> doubt that even though i do believe this was way too soon you know, this is one of the rare occasions I feel uh, uh, this was too soon. It was, you know, on some level, this is perfection. And I know that even if it means he's going to be looking out, out for us on our channels and keeping away the creatures of the night that love to hover around us, I have no doubt that he will be there in that way for us as well and probably many others too. So thank you, Dad. <laughs> See you soon, everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. And if you feel inspired, please do share with your friends and family. My goal is to inspire as many people as I can to live their best lives, to stay curious and to raise their consciousness and that of the collective. So to do this, I need to reach as many people as possible. And this needs your help. If you feel drawn, would you be willing to share your favourite episode with five different people? This helps us spread the word and also helps me encourage some exciting new guests to take part in this podcast. If you feel drawn to do that, I will be very, very grateful. All the links and discount codes where applicable for all the products that I support are on my two websites, katherineedwards.life and katherineedwardsacademy.com. All of the products are personally tried and tested by me, my family, and my clients. And finally, please do press the follow or subscribe button, depending which platform you're listening on. And above all, stay curious and stay free.